The Great Steppe, millenniums of events, hundreds of nomadic tribes and people. They lived, worked, made discoveries, conquered large tracts of lands, and left us some mysteries. To learn more about it, watch the project called Enigma of the Great Steppe. There are names of the heroes of different wars inscribed on the walls of the main temple of the glory of Russian weapons, the St. George's Hall of the Kremlin. Among them, there is a single Kazakh surname. And what a surname! Hubay Dulas Sultan Genghis Khan. Who was this officer? Where was he from? When did he live? To answer these questions, let's visit the places where everything is started for this glorious Chinggisid. Almost 200 years ago, this forest was planted by the order of our hero's father, the young ruler of the Inner Horde, Jangir. As the pine woods grew, Hanat's capital was expanding. Today, it is the Erda settlement in the West Kazakhstan region. In the spring of 1840, in the Bouquet Horde, people were curious who will be born to Fatima, the third and the most favorite wife of Jangir Khan. On the 5th of May, she had a baby boy, it was the fourth son of this high-profile couple. His future seemed beautiful and so predictable. Gubay Dula's father made sure that tutors and governesses were taking care of his children. At Hanat's capital, everyone knew that once the time for education will come, young Gubay Dula will move to the city, he will attend cadet corps, and that the boy will visit his family on his vacations. So what were the events that ruined these people? What was waiting the bouquet horde? And why was believed among people that step princes can become an obstacle? Their father was an educated man and his lifestyle was a metropolitan one. His chambers were all decorated tastefully. Chairs, armchairs, sofas and mirrors were ordered by him from Petersburg. Paintings, portraits of the family members, and himself were hanging on the walls, what was prohibited according to Islam. Tables were decorated and between them there were two globes, earth and celestial. The year of 1840, when Gubay Dullah was born, was one of the most important for his parents. The emperor, Nicholas I, has officially acknowledged the heir of the Khan's throne of the inner horde. It was Gubay Dullah's elder brother, Sahib Gireh, Jangir Khan was ruling the horde confidently and firmly. It was in his genes, after all, he was a grand-grandson of Abu Khair Khan, the first ruler of the junior Jews. And if we look deeper into history, we can see that Jangir Khan and his sons were Genghis Khan's direct descendants. From the very childhood, Gubay Dullah has learned what does honor mean. The boy knew that for their immaculate service, the White Tsar is awarded his grandfather and father with blades. They were kept in the armory that Jangir Khan opened in his palace. Over time, in some mysterious way, several artifacts from Khan's collection will resurface far away from the bouquet horde and will shed some light on a private life of grown-up Gubay Dullah. But first things first. I charge myself with the responsibility to inform your High Excellency that Major General Jangir Bukhev, Khan of the Inner Kyrgyz Horde, has died after a short illness on the 11th of August at 6.30 p.m. On the 11th of August, 1845, Jangir Khan died in his summer residence at 6.30 p.m. They were waiting for the arrival of his first son, Crown Prince Sahib Kire. His father's sudden death had a great influence on the atmosphere in the Horde. 
But people in power remain calm and promise that once Sahib Gideh will reach adulthood, he will inherit the throne. But as it turned out, it didn't end this way. The death of Gubaydullah's father, Han Zhangir, still remains a mystery. According to the official version, he died due to some sudden illness. The book written by researchers Gennady Guspan Mukataev and Marina Irkina contains some archive documents, including a secret letter from a man called Daniil Tatarinov. He was writing about the speculations that the Horde people had about the sudden death of the Khan. Some blamed Russian doctors, saying that they poisoned the ruler. Others suspected his wife Fatima, apparently. She was jealous of his younger, fourth wife. As a result, Orenburg governor has found out about it, as well as minister for state property and so on. But Orenburg governor was adamant that Fatima was very devoted to her family. The horde was restless. Aggressive Kazakh commoners were coming to its capital with their threats. An investigation was conducted. Tatarinov was demanded to explain everything. In the autumn of 1845, Gubay Dula's careless childhood ended. His mother was gone too. Before her death, Fatima managed to summon her heir from St. Petersburg, hoping that Sahib Gide will ascend Khan's throne, but he was too young. So he had to return back to the Page Corps. One of the descendants of the dynasty, Sholpanai Amanjolova, has been studying family history for many years. Once, her attention was caught by a suspicious string of Chinggisid's deaths. When everything happened at once, Jangir has died and all his children too, all one by one. Fatima's children, Sahib Gide, Ibrahim, children from his other wife, Juzum, Ismail, he was studying at Nipluev Corpse. They have died too. It has always been written in the documents in unclear circumstances, and it makes an impression that they didn't die naturally. Was it ill fate that pursued Chinggisids? Was it human intent or maladies after all? Perhaps we will never find out, but it is known for sure that right after the step prince Sahib Gire has died, in spite of numerous heirs, the Han's power was abolished in the inner horde. City on the Neva River, very distant from Kazakh steppes, has become a shelter to orphaned little Chinggis Hid. In 1849, Gubay Dula Zhangirov was enrolled at Imperial Page Corps in St. Petersburg. It was a higher education institution for the representatives of the nobility of the Russian Empire. Children of the emperor himself, his relatives and princes studied there. A Kazakh boy who came to Petersburg from the Bouquet Horde, a boy who didn't know a single word of Russian, learned the language and graduated with honors. In 1856, Gubay Dula Zhangirov, or Beke Khanov, has become a cornet in the lifeguard's Cossack regiment. An excellent career in the regular army was awaiting him. At that time, it was a rare thing for someone coming from the Kazakh steppes. Over time, Alexander II noticed this brilliant officer and appointed him as his aide-de-camp. What important business has Chinggisid had to deal with? What were the events he has witnessed and participated in? And where does his nickname, Mamai, come from? Under Alexander II, military reform began. Following the example of French and Austrian armies, he decided to create communications troops and telegraph lines. And Colonel Gubay Dula Zhangirov has been appointed as the first head of Russia's Department of Communications. So basically, he was one of the founders of the Russian Army Communication Forces.
In various sources, Kazakh officer is mentioned under different surnames, Zhangirov, Ukekhanov, and the most unusual one is Genghis Khan. But more on that will follow later. In the meantime, we will tell you about an important period in the life of the hero. In 1877, a war broke out between the Russian and Ottoman empires. Colonel Genghis Khan has left St. Petersburg in order to participate in military actions in Bulgaria. Under his supervision, a telegraph cable was laid across the Danube River and a telecom network was launched on the battlefield. One August day became a really special one for Colonel Genghis Khan. After reports of failures near Pleven, Tsar has received the news about successful taking of a Grivitsa redoubt, and the Chinggisid was the one to break this joyful news. For all his merits, the military Kazakh officer was awarded with various orders of the Russian army and many other foreign orders. Gubaydullah was a representative of Russia at the signing of the peace treaty with Turkey. For his prowess in war campaigns, he was awarded with a golden saber for courage. Secondly, his name, Gubaydullah Zhangirov, a Russo-Turkish war participant, was engraved in one of the main halls of the Kremlin Palace. The Minister of Internal Affairs is applying for making Army Cavalry Lieutenant General Sultan Genghis Khan with dismissal from service, a general of the cavalry. Lieutenant General Sultan Genghis Khan is the son of the Khan of the Bukay Kyrgyz Horde, a Muslim. His active service is 37 years, one month and 13 days long, including campaigns and battle time. There is a post-war image of Gubaydullah that has reached us. It is known that in a close circle he was sometimes called our Mamai, who was the person who was named after the Mongol commander. Some say it was the emperor himself, but there is one more assumption, and it is directly linked to this photograph. The thing is that in the picture he has a beard, and that's why his regimental comrades were calling him Mamai because of the beard, just for fun. Back then, there was a tradition. All officers in the Russian army, all generals, had to wear beards. A beard was a sign of a military man, an officer. Almost every single Russian general and Tsar had beards. It symbolized fortitude, especially among military people. There is one more mysterious circumstance. As we see, Sultan Gubaydullah Ukekhanov was favored by the court, but strangely enough, he was not welcomed in his homeland. As it turned out, even in the beginning of his service, he couldn't come back home. When Gubaydullah was coming back home, people would celebrate, saying the prince was back. And someone filed a complaint saying, we need to estrange him. The people, they would say, want the return of the Khan's power. And soon this degree was issued to prevent intrigues from the Khan's relatives. All Zhangir Khan's children should be moved to any corner of the Russian Empire. They can be provided with any palaces, any jobs. If they are not willing to work at civil or military service, they should be provided with a state pension. So basically all Han's relatives have moved to Crimea. So what people considered step princes as the obstacle? What was the basis of the rumors about the ban on their return to the horde? In their book, researchers Mukataev and Irkina assumed that all of these speculations can be traced back to the local elite, sultans and elders. Zhangir Khan's closest friend was Karaul Hodja Babadjanov. Zhangir was married to his daughter. And this man is reported Gubaydullah to the authorities, saying that he was spreading rumors about rehabilitation of Khan's power and criticizing local authorities and also was inciting Kazakhs to leave the horde. 
Вот даже такие были обвинения в его адрес. И после этого письма Бабаджана... Министерство внутренних дел с жалобой на Губайдулу. Вот прям с первой строки начинает... His first and the last sentences of the letter were the following. Уберите отсюда ханских детей. Get rid of Han's children. They won't let us transform the horde. Мешают делать преобразование в Орле. Yes, he was estranged from his family nest, but they couldn't take away things that belonged to him by the very right of blood. So why has he added the name of his glorious ancestor to his surname? And in what event that was important for Kazakhs was he involved? And how have Khan Tamgas emerged in Yalta? And what Swallow Nest has to do with all of this? Before the war, Sultan Gubaydullah Jangirov is decided. His surname should reflect the fact that his family were the direct descendants of the great Genghis Khan. So he requested the emperor asking to restore Han title in his family with his elder brother, Ahmed Girey. He was only asking for Genghis Khan's surname to show his belonging to the clan. The emperor complied with his request. Everything was done quickly. That wasn't the only time when a Chinggisid was standing up for his honor before emperors. A letter written by Gubaydullah Genghis Khan to Alexander III was found in Russian archives. Retired general was a part of the commission that was putting together regulations on the management of Turkestan region. He wrote, I think that it is not political to involve a spiritual side when it comes to our steplands. Our Bismarcks do not understand that they can touch their beliefs, traditions, and lifestyle. Gubaydullah Genghis Khan was also in charge of developing the regulations on elections in the first Russian state Duma that at some point included Kazakh deputies. He has always been very close to Alexander II, then to Alexander III, and to the last Tsar, Nicholas. He was their personal consultant on Asia. They would always use his assistance, especially in questions related to the elections, when he was inquiring governor about Kazakhs' participation in elections. And because of his involvement as studies in form, for the first time in history, Kazakhs gained the opportunity to be elected in the state Duma. In the beginning of 1908, Gubaydullah, who was suffering from lung disease, follows doctor's advice and moves to Crimea. At that time, his brother, Ahmed Girey, a retired colonel, was living there. This amateur video was made by the members of the heirs of the Great Steppe expedition. Uralsk ethnographers came to Crimea to study one of local mansions. A couple of years ago, Mukataev and Irhina included its picture and the information that Zhangir Khan's descendants lived here into their book. <laughs> Young man, I represent Yalta History and Literature Museum. These people are from Kazakhstan. Prince Chinggis once lived in this house. They're writing about the history of this place and also they're descendants of the same clan. Can you please let us in? We just need to take a couple of photos of the house. These are Clan Tamgas. T letter stands for Chinggis Sid, descendants. If a Kazakh didn't know that the place belongs to Chinggis, he could easily understood it from these Tamgas. It is an emblem that shows that the house belongs to Tore clan. Look, this is a picture of the front door of the house. Here they drink tea, and this is the owner of the house. Most likely that Chinggis Sid's coat of armors was placed there, at the entrance through the front doors, but it didn't make it to modern days. 
But these tamgas are still here. During the Soviet period, people might have thought that it was some kind of decoration or ornament. In this case, the house belonged to Ahmed Gireh, Gubaydullah's brother, and Gubaydullah lived here too. In 10 kilometers from Yalta, on the steep Aurora Rock of the Ai Todor Cape, a cottage was built in the end of the 19th century. Today, this place is known as the Swallow Nest. It is a famous landmark of the south shore of Crimea. Lots of people have owned the castle, and it was reconstructed numerous times. The very first building was associated with some retired general, a hero of the Russo-Turkish War. Is it possible that it was Gubaydullah Genghis Khan? The thing is, that I firmly believe that Swallow Nest has never belonged to Gubaydullah Jangirov on paper. Apparently, it was not his private property. He might have rented it. It was a common thing back then. Remember the story about Jangir Khan's armory? In some mysterious ways, its traces have been found in Bakchi Sarai, former capital of the Crimean Hanat. Another interesting detail that we found out during our expedition was the fact that two items on weapons display at Bakhchin Sarai Museum have connection to Gubaydullah. I talk about two blades that his grandfather Bouquet and his father Jangir received at the time of coronation ceremony in Han Grove in Uralsk. Retired general of the cavalry Genghis Khan has died in February of 1909 in Yalta. The Muslim cemetery where he was buried hasn't been preserved. He didn't have any heirs. It was believed that not a single beauty has managed to win his heart. However, a couple of years ago, in one of Petersburg archives, researchers have found a document called On the Change of Vilinskaya Surname to Genghis Khan's Surname. It turned out that in the last years of his life, the officer became a big theater enthusiast. He fell in love with the actress, a noblewoman called Fyodosia Vilinskaya. It is known that she was the performer of the main party in Rimsky Korsakov's The Snow Maiden Opera. After the death of the hero, the widow was allowed to change her family name to Genghis Khan. Her petition allowed to trace the bizarre fate of the unique artifacts from the Bouquet Horde. In 1919, Feodosia Vilinskaya Genghis Khan sold some items from the Jangir Khan's armory to the Ethnography Museum of St. Petersburg. There were all kinds of legends surrounding Gubai Dula Genghis Khan's persona, and usually when a certain legend emerged, we were trying to debunk it and find a legitimate document to support the truth. With his family name, we initially have thought that he wanted to call himself Genghis Khan, signed once this way and that's it. Everyone got used to his surname and started to call him this way. But then you realize what things he has overcome, many things he had gone through in order to reclaim this name. This makes us respect this person even more. Because the surname wasn't merely a proof of his blood relation to Genghis Khan, it was his bond with the great conqueror a person who once became a founder of military and martial arts. He perceived this surname as a connection to his ancestors, those who fought for their lands, and he felt he was one of them. Shadows of the past have always followed this man. His famous clan name could have become his burden, but he has found the support in it. Moreover, the shadow of his glorious ancestor has an outshined Gubai Dulan, and even when the life has changed, he was still devoted to his motherland, his family, faith and ancestors' traditions. He was always proud of the fact that he was the son of the Great Steppe.